Hello and welcome to the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. My name is Ashley, I am your host, and today we're going to be going over some new things that I've got fresh off my hooks and things that are coming up very soon. So exciting stuff. Welcome, I'm glad you're here, and let's get started. Let's talk about some things we got going on, right? This morning, I took my finished, my first finished Dunzel sweater out of the dryer. I washed it and dried it last night, and it is absolutely fabulous so there are a few things that i've noticed about this pattern this pattern is the one that is coming out in august of 2022 so here in a couple of weeks we will have this new denzel sweater i've been talking about it a few times over the uh, last couple of podcasts and yeah i'm really excited about it so one of the reasons that i started this uh, sweater for august is because there was a gentleman named denzel that emailed me and asked if i had a lighter weight yarn top down sweater for men and the short answer to that was no <laughs> uh, the long answer is it's coming so here we are i cracked the code on this sweater that's what i call it when i figure out the math and how to increase and everything um incrementally uh for the correct sizing and everything else but i cracked the code on this sweater and I am very happy with how it turned out. There are a couple of things with this particular version that I'm not super thrilled with, but this one is for my, me, for myself. I'm going to be keeping this one um, and wearing it myself. So this is a thinner weight yarn. Isn't that pretty? It's very, it's very nice, but what I've noticed about this particular yarn that I used, this is more of a fingering weight, to be honest. It says that it's a, a DK weight, which is a size three, but I do not believe it. So. This is a fingering weight yarn, size one. I don't know that I would repeat that with um, another sweater because it's just too thin. If you, I've noticed that if I pull it just a little bit, it really starts to open up those stitches and I'm just not happy with it. I love it and I'm going to wear it, but for the pattern, we're going to definitely not use a yarn that is so thin, right? So definitely make sure that you're doing a size two yarn when you go to crochet this one. It does have an astronomical drape to it because it is such a thin weight and it is very pretty and I absolutely love it. It turned out lovely, but what I've noticed with this yarn in particular, if there's any inconsistencies in your stitches, like one of my, uh, one of my loops I pulled up was just a tad bit taller than the rest and it's glaringly obvious. So I, I mean, I'm happy with it, I'm just not thrilled. So when I go to publish this pattern, we will talk about specific yarn choices, etc. But yeah, for the most part, I'm happy. I'm happy with the pattern, not happy with my yarn choice here in particular. So this one will be coming out the first week of August. I do have extra small up through 5XL, and this is a men's sweater. So honestly, it's a unisex. It looks great on me. It looks great on Catherine. <laughs> um, and I had my younger son try it on yesterday. He typically wears an extra, si extra small or small in um, adult men's. And this size small was a little bit big on him, so I did add the extra small. I'm going to get him one of those made up as well. I have an extra large for my other son, so we are going to model this together as kind of a unisex type of thing, but I am calling it the Denzel in honor of Denzel, who gave me the um, inspiration for this pattern. So I'm excited. We'll get more um, into the yarn choice and everything else um, as we get closer to the publication date. So yes, we're gonna move this along. We have a brand new pattern I did. Okay, so I told um, in my live on Facebook recently, I talked a little bit about how I recently restructured the business to where both of my sons have a very small percentage of ownership in the business. So very exciting. Um, they're 13 and 15, so almost 14, almost 16. And I will say that in the several months since they, since I told them that they are part owners, it's been really awesome to see them um, come up with the different ideas of things that we should do. Um, just, just approaching it with a different mindset, you know, instead of here mom is with this crazy, crazy crochet. Now it's like, oh, we have stake in the game, you know, so they're helping me decide um, to, how to move forward and everything. So one of the things of the reason that I'm telling you this is that my younger son is a guitarist and he has been practicing. He's been taking guitar lessons for almost two years. In August, it'll be two years. And he's pretty amazing um, in 
there's a music festival that happens every year in the Wichita area um, at one of the lakes and next year he's going to be opening it up with the national anthem so it's pretty exciting pretty amazing and with his salary from helping me on the blog which he does help um, they both help behind the scenes here um, at the apartment in the studio as I like to call it and also with modeling and things like that and inspiration sizing um, sizing issues I bounce ideas off of them um, yeah so with his salary he's been saving up to buy a guitar and so he bought the guitar last week it was delivered on Tuesday it's absolutely beautiful I shared some photos of it on the Facebook page and I just recently published this blog post with a free pattern for this guitar strap right so this strap is freaking amazing it is a cotton this is 100 percent cotton because it will stretch just a little bit but cotton is going to be a lot stronger than acrylic acrylic will stretch out immensely we have a hole here at the bottom to put at the bottom end of your guitar and then it obviously goes let me see if i can get this over the shoulder like this right and what i love about this is this is the same exact yarn and basically the same idea as the seatbelt cover pattern that I have. So it's super comfortable. And you think if you're holding all, all of this weight, right, you don't want this to just be digging into your shoulder. So double the thickness with this, uh, I think it's go for fleece. It's a lion brand Sherpa yarn. Absolutely super comfy. If you're making the seatbelt cover and you have someone in your life that plays guitar and that would use this, you know, or just to keep it as a backup strap in their guitar case, um, you could make the seatbelt cover and this with one skein probably several of them, to be honest, because it only takes 17 yards of the Sherpa yarn to do this entire thing. So very awesome. We do have on this end, there are several different holes. I don't know how well you can see that. There we go. There are several different holes so that it makes it adjustable. If you, um, yeah, so he started out when I first made this it, with his old guitar, he was here and now he's grown so much that he's on this one here. So anyway, if you would like a guitar strap, I will drop a link to that in the description below. Now, another thing that I have coming out very soon is my, one of my very good friends, one of my oldest friends. We met when we were in high school. Um, I actually dated him. <laughs> He's a German guy. Um, and I went to Germany um, for um, a school after I graduated here. I went to high school over there for a while and I stayed with his family and everything. And it was, it was pretty nice, right? So we lost touch and we recently reconnected a couple of years ago and we've been chatting back and forth and he just had a baby. So like literally, a couple of days ago. So I have this pattern that I am getting ready to release and I am going to name it after this little boy named Jacob Jakob in German um, or how you would pronounce it um, in German and he's precious. He's absolutely adorable and so I have this brand new pattern that I will be sending over for them. It's a rainbow themed um, obviously and it is using the flat granny stitch. So the flat granny, um, it really reminds me of like a printout of your picture of your grandma, <laughs> but the flat granny is a very very simple repeat right I actually started this pattern um, back when I found out that he was expecting I thought okay let's get this rolling right so we can have it after his namesake but this was started I think it was in March ish of this year and that was when my younger son was playing basketball so what I would do is I would take this blanket and since this is a flat granny stitch and it's something that you don't necessarily have to be looking at it the entire time you're crocheting it I would sit there and I would watch his basketball games and I would crochet blind on my lap right so I almost named this like the, the blind basketball <laughs> blanket <laughs> because it's something that you can do without looking at it. And I love that about the granny stitch in general. So this is going to be coming out very soon on the Heart Hook Home blog. As soon as I get it, I need to take a bunch of pictures, throw it in the wash, get it nice and softened up for little Jacob and get it in the mail over to them. But yeah, this is going to be one that is coming out very soon on the blog for free. Very nice free pattern, right? Love it love it now there is another new pattern that i am coming out with very soon and i'm very excited about it i am making okay so i got a really long stick okay i, I bought it it came in a three pack that's not like i just went out hunting or hiking right but it's a 48 inch long stick i might end up um shortening it down just a little bit it might be a little bit too long but i am making a boho ish plant 
themed wall hanging. So I've got this really cool stick and I'm going to make all of these leaves and hang them from the stick and it's gonna be absolutely amazing. So I haven't quite decided yet if I want to use like a fishing line to hang these leaves or if I want them to be yarn so that it's actually visible how they're hanging. I'm, I'm kind of going for like a macrame look, but it's totally not macrame and it's definitely crocheted. Let me show you the first one that I have. Because if you, um, not too long ago, hmm, I guess it was on October-ish, uh, so it's been almost a year, I suppose, I shared um, pictures of the inside of my apartment here, and this entire wall, I'll share, I'll put an inlay here, but this entire wall is full of plants. I, I have gone a little plant crazy um, in the last year or so, and yeah, my, my kids the other day were saying that it's a problem. Like every time I leave the house, I either have to buy a pot or a plant or or potting soil or something to do with plants and uh, they're not wrong I mean that's that's true <laughs> but I'm learning you know I'm just I'm getting better at um, growing plants propagating them um, learning how to propagate them you know you got to make sure that you get the node on there because there's nothing coming off of it if it doesn't have a little node on it um, but yeah so I've been working really hard I've been growing plants from seeds and seeing what I can do and what I can't do um, honestly I keep having to get new plants because some of them just don't want to live and <laughs> the point is that I'm trying right so uh, here is a leaf that is never going to die and it's going to be hanging on my boho wall hanger for um, a foreseeable future but look at this baby oh my gosh isn't that cute this is why the podcast is so late today because I have literally been sitting here crocheting various different kinds of leaves so this obviously is a monstera leaf right? They have the fenestrations, which, which are the holes on here. I am going to make this in different sizes. So I have a lighter green, and I have a variegated green, and then I have a darker variegated green. And then there's this, eh, I wouldn't call this hunter. I'm not sure exactly what colorway this is, but it is a, a very nice deep green. So I'm going to make several different leaves several different leaf patterns, probably three, maybe four, um, different sizes of these leaves. Some of them are going to have holes. Some of them are going to have no holes at all. Some of them are going to have a lot of holes. Some of them are going to be larger. Some of them are going to be smaller because if you do have a monstera plant, you know that there are all different kinds of leaves. There's very small little leaves. They all look like little hearts, which I think this, the, the top part here, right between my eyes, <laughs> that part is what was giving me fits earlier. Um, I've been working on this leaf idea for, oh gosh, it's been probably about a week off and on. And I was really starting to get upset. So what I did was I started at the bottom here and I just laid it on top of that one of my leaves. So this is an exact replica of one of the leaves on my plant. So I'm probably going to end up taking a picture of that and putting it next to this so that you can see, you know, when I go to publish the pattern. But um, this is going to be coming out at the end of July, maybe the first week of August. And so I'm going to be doing these on video with you. I have a video tutorial in the works for all of these different leaves. You can make them make several of them. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking if we do four different leaf patterns and we have three, maybe four, depending on how it works out, different yarns that we're going to use in, in different shades of green, we can have several of these exact leaves and then we'll have several of, of a different size, several of a different size, and then maybe we'll make like one huge one with a lot of fenestrations in it, you know? Um, yeah, and so we're just going to hang them from this stick and it's going to be the coolest thing ever. So I haven't quite decided if I want to use, like I said, the fishing line to actually hang the leaves or if I want to hang them at an angle or if I want to hang them straight down. I just haven't decided yet. I am probably going to block these because of the way that it's going to be used. I'm never going to need to wash them. Um, I mean, I, I I can't imagine why I would wash them if they're tied to a stick, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's gonna be the best wall hanging ever and I'm very excited about it. So very boho, very chic, very cool, very, yeah. I'm excited. So all of the different sizes, hang them off of there. If you have suggestions on how to hang these, if you have a preference um, or any reason why I should do one or the other, definitely let me know. But isn't this absolutely gorgeous? I'm very happy with how this turned out. Um, it was not fun. <laughs> I mean, but that is the fun of it, right? Is is figuring out what works and what doesn't work and then taking, you know, at first I wasn't growing this wide enough. And that's when I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put it on this little leaf and 
legit make a duplicate leaf. So what I did is I noticed that it wasn't quite um, as wide as it should have been. So I was able to count how many stitches more I needed and adjust for that restart over and then it came out absolutely perfect. So if you are also a plant loving yarn holic, then you're going to love this new project coming out in a few weeks and it's going to be amazing. So I haven't decided if I'm, I bought a macrame cord um, to hang it, but it's a cream color and I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I want to do that or if I want to, I just don't know. I just don't know. Cause I also could use nails or hooks and just kind of place the stick in it so that it doesn't have an actual hanger coming off of the top of it. I haven't quite decided on that yet, but yeah, working on that. Now for September, I am working on the new pattern for September um, for, the, for the wearable. And for that one, I am planning a houndstooth vest. This is something that I have been thinking about and talking about for months, literally. Um, but what I've discovered, like I, I have told you in the past that I have never actually crocheted the houndstooth stitch. And what I've discovered is that it is essentially the lemon peel stitch with just a different color. You just alternate colors back and forth. So that seems easy, easy peasy. And what I'm thinking is, um, you know, um, with the white and black houndstooth vest with the white undershirt, like a white collared shirt underneath it, I think it's gonna be super cute, very cute for fall. Um, yeah, so I'm getting started on that now. That is my plan for the September pattern. I've already got um, the October pattern on my on my mental table. And then, yeah, I've got them all planned out for the rest of the year and I'm very excited about that. For 2023, I have decided that this pattern, one pattern a month um, thing that I've got going on in 2022 is not sustainable. It's just not. Um, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off, which is good. I mean, it's a good, good love hate relationship. You know what I mean? <laughs> but for 2023, I am planning on going through all of my older patterns and finding out like ranking them as far as the most popular and then i am going to go through and make video tutorials to go along with all of those um or not all of them but starting at the top of the list with the most popular that i don't already have a video tutorial for and pump these out um for next year so next year instead of publishing a pattern every month which is like i said not sustainable we are going to be going and doing a lot more tutorials a lot more hands-on a lot more videos right of making something from the beginning all the way through the end so that is my goal for 2023 and i'm very excited about that there are, are so many patterns that i either have a lot of questions on that i'm just unable to uh, gosh, I mean, it would be so much easier if you just had a video tutorial to follow along with me. To that end, I have redone recently a video of uh, one of my most popular border tutorials is the reverse shell stitch. And that one is one that in that video, I neglected to show you how to go around the corner of the blanket right and that's kind of a big deal so I have recently finished um, and I've already given given the blanket away so I can't show you a picture of it but I have um, recently redone that entire video so all I need to do is sit down and edit that and that will be updated as well so that is one of the most beautiful borders that's actually one of my most popular uh, video tutorials that I have on my YouTube channel which is kind of sad because it's not the best right so we're going to get that updated. That should be done here in the next couple of weeks or so. All I have to do is edit it and get those pictures done and everything else for the blog. So very excited um, for all of these updates and everything. I think that, you know, it's great to have, to be, you know, putting out all of these new patterns and tutorials and ideas and things like that. But it's also important to go back and make sure that everything that I've done up until now is the best that it can be. And I feel like if I've learned a lot in the, you know, five, almost six years, here in two weeks, two weeks from today, um, Heart Hick Home will turn six. I think she's gonna be six. Yeah, she's a person, right? Um, but yeah, that's when I started Heart Hook Home was almost exactly six years ago, um, two weeks from today. So on the next podcast, that is going to be Heart Hook Home's birthday. And we're going to have to do something fun. Maybe we'll do a giveaway or maybe we'll do something, something fun. But what I've learned in those last six years is 
completely. I mean, I, I don't even know how many wearable patterns I've published since then, since my very first one that I ever did, which was in 2017. So in those years, um, in, the media, in the interim there, I learned a lot. And if I can go back and update some of my earlier patterns that are popular patterns or were back then and kind of um, just bring, answer any questions that I've had in all of these years or reformat the pattern, etc. So one of the ones that I am doing right now is the Cozy Coed Cardigan. That is one of my most popular patterns and I printed off the PDF of that the other day and I'm going through and I am reformatting that one because it is 51 pages. Like that's a book, you know, uh, that's a lot. So I'm reformatting that pattern and I'm remaking them. So I'm, I've got an extra large for my older son that is ready. It's a dark blue. It's really pretty. And then I've got a size small for my younger son. And then I've got one for myself because that is a true co-ed pattern. So the three of us, I probably, once it cools off here a little bit, it's been over 100 degrees for weeks I mean it's, it's awful <laughs> or close to 100 um, but yeah it's uh, once it cools off a little bit the three of us I'll get us all in our little co-ed pictures and everything and share that with you and get that pattern updated that one already does have a video tutorial so I won't do that but we need to get that pattern from 51 pages down to maybe 15 or maybe 20 um, but really just just you know, calling unnecessary info and reformatting, keeping everything fresh and and revitalized and new and yeah, throw some old love or some new love at some old patterns, right? So I'm excited. So if you have any, um, any ideas of which patterns you would like to see video tutorials for, um, drop them in the comments so that I can kind of get a feel of what you're looking for. I did think that maybe towards the end of this year, um, when I really start gearing up to, or once I get the December pattern, squared away and we're ready you know to to go into 2023 um full steam ahead i might do a poll of all of the patterns that i have or maybe do like a list of the most popular and say okay of these what do you want to see um, a tutorial for you know so yeah pretty exciting i'm excited to remake some of my older things and and you know Everything that I make, I fall in love with a little bit, right? And I, I mean, I wouldn't publish something that I wasn't in love with myself. So going back and rediscovering these old ones, um, trying different yarns, trying, you know, anything is just, it's exciting and I'm excited. So I am looking forward to two weeks, which is the anniversary of Heart Hook Home. She'll be six years old, which is mind blowing, right? <sighs> Crazy. So yes. Keep an eye out for a special treat. If you have not yet signed up for the email newsletter, make sure you do that because later this summer or during this summer, um, I am planning on every time I update one of those patterns, I'm toying with the idea of sending out a free code or a coupon code or something to just uh, you know get excited about that pattern again. So if you are on the email list, you will get those. And if you're not, you won't. So, and that's sad. So make sure you're on the email list. And yeah, link is in the description below. And I will see you all in two weeks. We'll have some kind of celebration for Hark at Home. And yeah, and then the Denzel pattern will be almost ready. So all of these different sizes that I have working up, they will be finished. And I will be ready to share teasers with you and everything else. And I am so excited. So thanks for joining me today, guys. And I will see you next time on the Hark at Home video crochet podcast. Thanks for watching.